this is Stampy and welcome to a, another behind the scenes video. Today I'm designing a brand new mini game for my lovely world. As you're watching this I have already built at least most of the, the mini game in my lovely world. So yeah if you want to go and see what it's going to end up becoming feel free to, to spoil it for yourself. If not this is going to be showing you kind of me designing it from the very beginning. So there's one very basic idea for the mini game, which is all I have right now and I literally just thought about it five seconds ago. So I just haven't used magma very much. So magma is a pretty cool block and it has some pretty unique things that it does and I just haven't used it in a mini game yet and it just seems wrong that there's this whole unique block that I haven't used yet when I'm normally trying to use like every single thing that there is in Minecraft. So my basic idea for a game and I don't actually know what the game is going to properly be yet is that the floor is going to be mainly made out of magma and I don't know what you're going to actually be trying to do in the game but I like the idea of there being like two teams or a 1v1 and you're trying to like move around quickly but of course if you walk around you're going to get hurt on the magma but if you crouch you don't get hurt so i like the idea of you like m like switching between like okay i need to go fast i'm going to take the damage and i'm going to run and sprint or like okay i'm going to die i need to go and crouch i just like the idea of you choosing when to use a burst of speed tactically and when to to move around slowly and of course another big factor which is something i don't really talk about much in my lovely world is hunger so a lot of the times, like, I will have an advantage over my helpers because, say, Fizzy's only eating cookies or something. It's really hard for him to eat enough cookies to get his un hunger up. But for me, where I'm normally eating bread or, I guess, cake uh, as well, I can get my hunger up quite quickly. So I like the idea of kind of adding that as the other element. So the elements are, you know, the speed that you're going to move around in the magma, you're going to be watching your health and your hunger, and that could all play into the, the game. So that's kind of the general, I guess, twist and main unique feature for the the game i just have no idea what you're actually going to be trying to do in the the game what the objective is maybe it could be a simple kind of like capture the flag game you're trying to get to the other side maybe there's going to be combat i don't like the idea of there being combat actually because i don't like the idea of you being able to to herd each other while you're going around but yeah that's literally all that i have right now so i'm just going to go and play around a little bit with magma because it's something that i've not used very much and kind of think of what else i could do and then when i have a bit more of a, a concrete idea i'll come back in and let you know Okay, I think, um, well, I haven't built very much, but <laughs> apart from playing around, placing some things down on the magma, but I think I've worked out a pretty good concept for a first idea of a game. So firstly, the good thing is, is that if we put carpet on the floor, you'll see that it still hurts me through the carpet, which means I can do my normal stampy style mini game and have lots of bright colors and stuff uh, all over the, the place, which is good. You can also put cakes down on the magma. Might be interesting because, oh, actually, that's something I have I've actually kind of neglected a bit is the, the whole food element. But yeah, we can come back to that. So this is the main concept. There'll be four armor stands, probably like one on each side of the game. It is a little bit annoying because there's there's a bit of a, an arbitrary, well, not arbitrary, but a bit of an annoying list limit to the amount of armor stands that you can have in a world on 360 and I'm always right on that limit mainly because in my uh, clay oven like little fire thing there's I think there's like five or something armor stands just in there and then you know in a bunch of my mini games I use them and stuff so I'm gonna have to destroy armor stands from from somewhere else to be able to put these in but yeah that's not a too big of a problem I will make that work but the the thing that I had the idea to do is as I said these on each side and then imagine in some way there's random armor falling from the sky of four different colors and the aim of the game is to place the uh the the um the the colored armor on your armor stand to to complete a set and depending on what colors you put on will depend on how many points you get and it won't be a case of like you know this color armor is more valuable i think a fun way to score it is you just need to make it match you need to make your colors match william beaver's gonna love this game so imagine for example i have like this oh I broke my armor stand. I broke my armor stand. Yeah, let's go and get some, some more armor. So this will all probably be just like dyed leather armor, but I can't be bothered to dye it for now. So let's say that this is the, the armor I have on right now. It would be more valuable for me to, to put leather armor on rather than gold because it will match. And then the, the more that match, the more points you would end up getting. So that's a pretty cool way to do it. Because it's on armor stands, it's going to be like really obvious to everyone like what everyone's going for like i could say be on the the game and i look and i see all right fizzy elephant you know he's obviously trying to get blue armor he's got two blue armor on if i see blue armor fall down i'm going to want to grab it just to stop fizzy from getting it to stop him from being able to to get a better set and then that adds the twist of you know i see armor that fizzy wants do i stand up and sprint to it and like waste my health which is going to go up slowly to stop him from getting it or do i stay crap just to save my health so when armor falls down for me 
then I'm going to have a better chance of getting it and I'm not going to be like too damaged to go and get it. Because I think I think the game should be if you die, you're out. Like it should never get to a point where you die. It's always just about managing your health. If you die, then you're out of the game. So you've got to be really, really careful uh, about that. Um, yeah, so I think that I think that as a general concept works well. There's quite a lot of strategy and uh, a bit of skill with kind of you know when you're you're running around and stuff. But it's mainly about deciding you know what armor to go for. And I kind of have the idea. I don't know if I'm going to settle on this. Where maybe whatever hat you place that then marks the color that your your armor needs to to be and then you go and put the rest down like i don't like the idea of it being a case of where once you put armor down you can take it back off and switch it because i could be saying you know putting down a bunch of gold and then i realize like, oh no actually i got enough leather to do leather let me switch and then instead do leather i like the idea of you kind of have to you kind of have to, to commit to, to what you're going for and then you know everyone else will be able to keep track with what everyone else is trying to to get so yeah i think it's a general concept that works the thing i need to work out is how I'm going to randomly be kind of firing armor into the arena because what I don't want is just a bunch of dispensers pointing down because otherwise people are going to be standing here crouched underneath the dispenser just looking up waiting for it to, to drop and not moving around and only moving if they see armor somewhere else so I, I need some way to have either like something moving dropping them down or a way to make it more random or something so that's going to be the the big thing that I need to work out now Okay, I think I just made some good progress on working out how the armor could fall down randomly. So I did a few experiments. I even had the idea of like, if, imagine if you're knocking the items back and forth on here and then sometimes they fall down when they fell down every side. But yeah, that was a rubbish idea anyway. So ignore, ignore the bad ideas. But the thing that I came up with is the idea of using the spreading of grass. So one of the cool things that observer blocks do is they basically... Um, they detect any change in a block. So if I break away this block, you'll see it will move. Also, if this was um, dirt there, when this grass spreads to it, it will set off a redstone signal for a second and set off whatever I want to, to set off, which is good because it's a great way to do things random because in video games, it's hard to make your own random things because everything's kind of all completely set and there are a few ways you could do it there's things you can do where you know you could use animals wandering around going on pressure plates but they're always very very unreliable but i think grass you know covering would work pretty well so originally i had the idea of doing it so imagine there's a grass block here that gets pushed out i realized then that um grass can spread diagonally so that wouldn't really work and then i was playing around with them spreading diagonally and up and eventually i came up with this idea as kind of my my final test so if i push this block up here it would start spreading to it could spread to any of these and the good thing about it is once it's spread to one say if it's spread to this one here then this one and this one then have a greater chance of being spread to basically because you know it could spread from here or from here or from here so you know the more grass there is the faster the rest of the grass is going to, to start spreading and then these here are just observer blocks which are then linked up to droppers where at the moment are pointing down of course these droppers don't have to be in this arena arrangement i could kind of do them how i want i could do trails of redstone going from them and i can do the the droppers wherever i want and uh, down here uh, was just my test just to see how fast the 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 grass does go because you need it to, to spread relatively quickly and i think the way it's going to be okay is if i had a bunch of these then that's like a lot of potential grass to spread it's not like you're just waiting for for one block to go like we were down here you know the chances are some of it at least is going to, to spread relatively quickly but then the other th fun thing about about it is that the more grass that spread the faster the rest is going to spread which means the game's going to kind of start a bit slow with people kind of running around you know trying to get just a few bits of armor but then eventually by the end it's going to be spreading quite quick so it'll kind of get you know faster and faster pace the the further we go and i think that works quite well so i think the arena should be relatively big because for the whole mechanic of risking about sprinting or crouching, I think it needs to be quite a big arena. So I could maybe have like four of these mechanics. So that would be what we've got like six, seven, eight. So we've got six, so 32 droppers. That would be there. There is potential to, to drop down around the arena. So I think we could have a, a pretty big arena for, for that. And uh, yeah, I like this as a, as a general concept. So I think um, I'm pretty set on using the, the grass mechanic works quite well. It's a good way to do random things. I like the, the idea of most things. So now I think it's going to be a time to do a bit of a mock-up. It's always hard to do mock-ups of big games because you always end up spending ages building and destroying them. So I think the first thing I'm going to work out 
is the way exactly these are going to work and how they're going to be spread out. Then once I have that, I'll have a good way to work out the the, the size of the arena. Then I want to I can work out what I want to do with the the flooring in terms of the design with the the carpets and exactly where the the armor stands need to be. And I need to to not forget about food either. So maybe I think a nice simple way to do it is maybe have like cake just either side of where your your armor stand is. So then maybe if you want to go and get your food up, you know you can you can go to like your armor stand. Maybe it could be a rule that that you can't steal each other's cake so it could be a case of every time you run back to put some armor on you eat a little bit of the the cake and then head off but yeah that's all the the stuff i need to to work out now but overall i'm pretty happy with what i've done so far okay so i've come up with a pretty elegant design which i like but there's a problem and hopefully you're going to get to to see what the problem is here and i don't know if it's a, a glitch or if it's something that just happens but yeah hopefully we're just going to see it happening but basically this is the design that i came up with so I realized that it makes much more sense to to push the 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 grass block down rather than push it up uh, just because obviously the game is all going to be played underneath here so this means that all of the redstone can be kind of hidden through the ceiling and not kind of in the way of everyone when they're playing at all see so this is what keeps happening and this wasn't as extreme of an example of it as I've seen before, but basically it doesn't spread for ages and then suddenly loads spread at once. So I've had it in the past where like three or four of all spread, so nothing will happen, then suddenly it will go boom, and then suddenly there'll be loads of grass spread, rather than it kind of gradually spreading through it. And I didn't realize that grass could spread when it's not touching. So I don't know, I still don't know whether that is a glitch or whether that can happen, but it just is really weird how nothing happens and it all spreads. And then last time when it spread, like, some of the redstone just went crazy and started flashing really far so that is the the big problem so if the grass just spread like when it's on a gap like this and i'm doing some experiments down here by the way to see to see about how the grass spreads and stuff but if the grass just spread you know from the ground that wouldn't matter because all i would need to do is move all of this up one more until it's at you know the limit for where it needs to be pushed down but what i don't want is nothing to happen for ages and then suddenly five of these are covered with grass all at once and then it just goes crazy so that's the thing that i really want to avoid happening and that's my biggest concern right now because otherwise i think this works really well so what i thought would happen is as the block gets pushed down which would be the start of the game there's a dropper in the middle down here that would set off the first one and what i like the idea of is whatever hat you place down that is going to be the color that you need to commit with you can't change the color of the hat that you place down and so i think that the middle dropper should all be just full of hats and but you don't have to put the hat on straight away you could either say you know say if there's three people that get green hats you might might say okay i don't want to put down the green hat because i'm competing with everyone and then you could wait until you get other armor and then choose to place it down i just like that as a study mechanism and it also means that right from the very beginning of the game there's going to be stuff for you to, to pick up and things to, to think about and things to, to do and then yeah these would all just have droppers just full of random stuff and the idea is is that before every game would have to come up here and just fill all of these up again i could put like hoppers for, uh, um, pointing down into them and then that just means that um, you'll just need to throw them into the, the hopper rather than doing it that way. But to be fair, I don't I don't think that would actually even be any easier. So let's forget about that idea. So th there could be some smart mechanism that I do to refill them. It could even be a case of like, <laughs> this is getting a bit silly, but minecart tracks going over them. Bear with me here, bear with me. So these minecart tracks go over them and then I could have a hopper that then puts items in like so a minecart with a chest would go over and then hoppers go and put the items in that could actually be a way of doing it that might not actually be too ludicrous of an idea and also just a pretty cool thing to do so that might actually be the the solution here but the biggest thing i'm worried about for for now is what's going to happen with this grass here because this hasn't spread let's go and do this on the the same side over there just to, to kind of double the chances of that happening it just seems really 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 odd so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to stay staring at it for a, a little bit and then just show you a clip again of the way that it works just to show you how nothing happens for ages and then it all just kind of suddenly spreads at the the same time okay it just went and spread and it didn't do loads uh, as many as it's done in the the past but that took uh, that took like six minutes for that to, to happen. So way, way, way longer than like if this was down and just spreading across all of them. But as you can see, it still did two at the, the same time. So there's there's definitely something odd going on with the, the way that this is working, where it will take absolutely ages and then just spread two at the, the same time. And aha, 
These are our little examples. So it definitely does spread. So this is annoying because uh, it's such an awkward problem to have and just so specific to what I'm trying to do because you'd think the easy solution would be to move this up to here and then do the exact same thing, you know, and do it here. Or even if that spreads as well to move it up one higher. But I don't want to do that because I don't want it to be a case where you're standing around for six minutes and then suddenly like four go off at the same time. That's not how I want it to be. I want it to be like, so the grass block is here and then it will gradually start spreading around the, the outside. Oh man, that's such an annoying glitch or just weird way that the game works where it, I mean, it, I mean, it must be a glitch. There's no way it's supposed to do it in that way. So I don't know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to have to work out a solution to this. I thought I was so on like almost the home stretch of designing the core mechanics to kind of just work out how big the arena would need to be to fit a few of these in and stuff. But I'm going to have to, to rethink this whole design now because that is that is just such a weird way that it works. So yeah, I'm going to have to have a little bit of a, of a play around and try and, and work out how this is uh, is going to, to actually work. Okay, I have basically just settled on doing a redesign. So there was no way for me to make the other version work, which is annoying because it was a much nicer, more elegant solution and would be better for the game. But it was just too glitchy. Like, it wasn't the case that the grass was spreading from this far away. I'm pretty sure that was supposed to happen. It was the way that no grass would spread for ages and then suddenly loads would all happen at the same time. I don't think there's any way to avoid that unless they change that in a future update and then I could maybe go back and change the game, which, let's be honest, isn't going to happen. I'm not going to bother doing that. But, yep, yeah, that's the good thing about these behind-the-scenes videos is you saw the better way the game could have worked, but now this is probably how it's going to more likely end up. So... This is the, the same general concept from the underneath. You're not going to actually really realize any difference. The biggest mechanical change is we no longer have the hats that are going to always drop from the, the top. Apart from that, it's pretty similar. So instead of having the one block that gets pushed down, I press this lever, pull the lever, pull the lever, there we go. And then all of these blocks get pushed out. They are now touching the grass and this means it will be able to, to start spreading. Even though there's now four blocks of grass rather than one, it's actually like going to spread slower than if there was just one in the middle. You would think that it wouldn't, but each of these grass blocks is only touching another bit of dirt. Whereas if this was a grass block, it could change any of these ones on the, the, the outside. Actually, oh, I guess it can go diagonally one. So, <laughs> oh yeah, still it's going to be at least no more effective than just having one single block. And it just means the redstone could have been so simple, just one trail of redstone to one piston. But now it has to be this jump pulled up mess which I think looks quite cool it looks like a spider or something I don't know but yeah it's going to be way more complicated for me to do in video which is always uh, an annoying part uh, but yeah uh, just uh, I kind of just decided with that idea because I was doing my tests here I was playing around with the idea of having the block higher and kind of doing like this weird like double piston mechanism which um you know, is something that I could have done, I guess, and it might have been cool to show that as like an example of how to do it. But it doesn't matter because the problem was never it jumping. The fact that the fact that it was just so unpredictable and weird how it'll do them all at once, that was where the big problem was rather than this. So under this grass, uh, this dirt here, there's another observer, and then that just leads to one down there, which basically means that this one isn't going to be the first one that drops down. It's just basically the same as all of the, the others. I guess it could especially probably more likely to be one of the, the final ones just because it needs to have spread enough to to get to the the middle but yeah i mean it'll work it's all fine it's just not as nice as the the older uh, yeah the the other version but as you can see over here uh, the grass doesn't jump this way the grass has to be touching in this direction um because yeah these ones have been here for ages and it hasn't spread so unless i've been really <laughs> unlucky and it's going to start spreading it looks like there's no way for it to jump across it's only down and up that grass seems to to jump which is yeah a little bit annoying but this as a way, as I said, works. So what I'm probably going to do is decide the size of the arena by having it four of these. So I need to make sure the redstone can fit in. Like there needs to be four of these. So it'd be like one here, one there, like one there, one there. So it's going to create a pretty big box. So it doesn't really matter that the redstone takes more space. And once it's all there, it's not going to matter that much. It's just the building, which is going to be a bit more frustrating and going to use up more redstone uh, and stuff. So yeah, that's going to be the, the, whoa. What happened there? <laughs> I just thought he was like staring up at the, the sky. So yeah, that's going to be probably the, the thing that I work out now. I've also ditched the idea of having the 
automatic filling the the dropper methods two reasons one this redstone just kind of would, wouldn't really work very well because it kind of blocks the track off and would make it even more messy also you're gonna have to come up here because i think no matter what you're gonna have to manually uh come up here once these are all pulled back and break away the the dirt to, to basically put it back down so i think you're gonna have to do that by hand anyway so if you're coming up here you know you might as well just go and fill the the droppers yourself so it is going to be a bit of a, of a slow game to to reset but i do think games are going to last for quite a long time and when i come to, to record it in my lovely world i can just kind of cut ahead during the the resetting which is you know my main my main thing i'm thinking about in all of this is you know this is to make a good video rather than necessarily a good build obviously it's good when it does both but the priority is always the entertainment in the video and i'm not going to make anyone sit there and watch me break away and replace the dirt and throw a bunch of armor inside of these droppers but yeah uh yeah that's what i'm going to do now then i'm going to go and work out the the actual size of the the game and then yeah probably start uh thinking about what the game's going to look like a little bit more because that's something i've neglected up until now Okay, I've done pretty good progress working out what this game is going to actually look like. Um, I like this colour scheme. Uh, it's very, very different compared to, to anything else that I've really done in my lovely world. I mean, well, it's not it's not really different. It's still just coloured wall in the shape of a square. But I haven't done these types of colours before. And obviously, as you can see, these are the colours. You can guess what it's inspired by. And it mixes really well with magma as well. Like, say if I surround this with magma, it just fits as well. You know, obviously the yellow is a little bit bright, but there's kind of two pixels of yellow down there. So I think this is a, a nice mix. And the, the red's obviously a bit too red. But that's uh, as close to the, the colours as I could get. And so... I started building this thing down here, which is starting to, to look more like an actual mini game. This is always the fun part because this is the part where I'm designing things that I'm getting pretty certain is actually going to end up being kind of in the actual mini game. Whereas this is all kind of really just me working out the idea for myself. So uh, you see, I've gone for the color scheme. I've used, rather than using any other blocks in the middle, I've just used, uh, used magma. I thought it'd be a shame to have no magma on the, the floor, so that's kind of marking down here, the fact that it's carpet really doesn't make any difference. And then I've added a lip around the outside here, which has two functions. One, it makes it look more interesting, because I've kind of done the same thing on the ceiling for no purpose other than making it look interesting. It also is a good cake shelf if I end up adding cake in. Also, another fun thing is if I go to survival, if I jump up on the edge, I can and actually, look at this, I can sprint around the edge. As long as I'm really careful to be right on the edge, I can kind of sprint around, which means you could technically use that to, to say if I'm here and something drops down over there, I could use the lip to sprint. It's going to be only used in very specific situations and quite difficult to do, but that's kind of a, another element. So I think that's kind of cool leaving that in around there. The thing I hadn't really thought about, and it's only now that I thought about it, is I haven't really planned how you would get in and out of the, the game considering like it's hard to go through the floor because of the the magma and stuff so for the moment i've just got an oak door on the side here and you know what it might actually end up being that i'll probably have all of the mechanisms on the orange side because i normally start on the orange side and so normally i'd be the person setting off the the game and stuff so i've linked it up now that if i pull this lever then that is going to to set off all of these pistons as you can see they're extended if i pull it back again now then they go and all get pulled back this is identical to the the thing that i i built down there and as you can see i could easily fit this in uh, all four sides it's kind of satisfying how it perfectly fits in but of course it was <laughs> designed to be uh, specifically that side so something i've only just thought of now is i need a bit of a delay i guess actually no it doesn't really i don't really need a delay i'll pull the lever and it starts straight away because it's not like something's going to drop down immediately so i think it's okay uh, uh, being the way it is now so all i'll do is from this redstone here i'd go and extend it to this side there uh, as well and then i guess i could do a trail of redstone going down the the middle down there uh leading to the the other side to go and set off that side uh, over there uh, as well so that seems to, to be no problem there and i could even if i'm getting really technical add like a repeater here just to, to delay this one a bit so that all of the pistons do get extended at the same time and these ones don't you know get extended a millisecond later if i want to get really technical Nicole. I don't know if anyone's going to take this game <laughs> that serious, but who knows? Maybe they, they will. So this is all looking 
looking pretty good for for now. So there's still quite a lot I need to, to work out. Like I haven't worked out what the outside of the game is going to really look like. Of course, this is probably going to be the outside walls here, but there needs to be a roof on top of here. So I could possibly play around and do something different. I could even maybe add lava on the roof could be fun. Maybe uh, not too close to the, the wall though. <laughs> and also I need a way, like a good way to get up to the top, the roof of the game to be able to, to reset the, the dirt. It really isn't going to take that long to be honest because what I think I'll do in the video is I will say right helpers you restock all of these droppers while you do that I will go up and break away the dirt so it's not going to take more than a minute to reset the game so it's really not that big of a problem it's just not particularly elegant I guess the that part of it so yeah let me go and uh and start working that stuff out and i'll come back in but overall i think this is looking looking all right oh one more thing one more thing so i didn't mention this earlier but squishy came up with an idea for the name of the game and i mean you can see by the title of the, the video what the name ends up being but her suggestion was i actually have to check something i got it's mag match as in like magma but magma match because you're trying to, to match things and also like a matchstick and you're playing a match there's a lot of a lot of uh, wordplay done there and i like that name so there's a pretty good chance this is going to end up being called mag match and squishy is in front of me pulling silly faces and looking all proud of herself so thank you squishy for the ingenious idea and sorry for i end up changing the name of the idea <laughs> right, right then so let me go and uh, uh carry on designing this and i think the next time i show it to you it's probably not going to be too far off being completely done Okay, so I think the, the game is pretty much finished now. This is what it looks like on the, the outside with the entire thing filled in. So this is basically the same oop, as it was on the, the other side. Uh, it looks really cool at night uh, as well because the, the magma glows a little bit. You can see it all illuminated up. I'm probably going to have to add a few torches in just because otherwise it's going to be covered in googlies. It adds a slight glow rather than really lighting it up properly. But yeah, definitely definitely unlike anything else uh, in my fun land, which is good. Uh, this is the, the entrance way. It's only on the the orange side here it only really needs to, to have one and then you enter in here uh, you can go up the the ladder which leads to the the redstone cave at the moment it's basically just this half done with this quarter filled in just because there's no point me doing the redstone here it's going to be the exact same on each side and uh, linking it all up together is going to be pretty easy so I'll just do that in my lovely world when we get to, to building it there then the other way you can go in is through this doorway here you're oh <laughs> what happened there? I just fell through the floor. Let me let me try that again, shall I? And hopefully not fall through this secret trap door. So yeah, you kind of got to crouch your way in. Uh, just because there's magma, I guess you kind of just gotta. I guess you kind of gotta crouch the entire time you're in the the game anyway. So that's no big deal. You can like be crouching and jump down as well, by the way, which is a, a handy thing to to know. And yeah, this is what the the inside looks like. It's kind of dramatic once you're inside it here and it's all lit up and stuff. So uh, I added torches around the outside, uh, some dangling down from the the ceiling as well. I moved the cakes to the corners. Uh, I thought that's just a better way. So you kind of have to, you kind of have to go out your way to go and get the the cake because I kind of just feel like that's better rather than you know you're coming back here anyway. You're always just going to top up with cake. You got to think right. I need to you know there could be a hat over there you want or you need to get food. So I think that it just works better that way and it's a little bit neater. We just need to remember to to stock up the the cake between rounds. So the only big thing that is is going to change is the fact that um I haven't oh oh what happened there. Oh, there might be a problem here, actually. Oh, no, here I was thinking that I was done. So as these pistons extended, I think they set off the observer block somehow. How did they do that? Oh, no, don't be up. Not now. I was just about to pat myself in the back and say, jolly good, Stampy. It's all done. But I might have discovered a last minute problem. No, right. What's going on here then? So I do that. And is it setting? Oh, it didn't seem to set any of them off this time. You see the trails of redstone going to, towards the, the droppers. That's what we're looking for. Let's go and put down some redstone. La oh. Ah. Okay, so it's this trail here is setting off. Okay, this is good. This is good because all I need to do is that. That's all I need to do. <laughs> I got so scared. And then it's going to be this one there as well. Basically going to, to all of these. I need to add a repeater down here as well because it was setting off the, the dropper. 
God, I panicked so much that I thought that I was going to have to redesign this entire thing again and that would have literally made me cry. But it's fine. Just add some repeaters down there. I'm glad I learned this now rather than building it in my lovely world like a fool and ending up confusing myself. But yeah, uh, this is basically how it's going to be. I'm sure there are one or two differences that are going to emerge in between now. And oh yeah, see one more interesting thing is this is ground level here. So the entire game is kind of slightly under the ground, if you see, just because of the way you enter, which is always kind of interesting because you can't really tell when you're in here, but it's all slightly underground level. But yeah, so there's probably going to be a few uh, changes in between, you know, this and my lovely world. So uh, yeah, see if you can spot any. Uh, I think there's a, a good thing that might change this entrance way a little bit. It looks all right, but uh, like I won't worry about building it exactly correct in my lovely world. So that might change. But I don't know. I think overall it probably won't change too much. So right then, the, the thing I'm going to be needing to do now is, you know, finding out a place in my lovely world to fit this in, probably doing a bunch of terraforming and getting everything ready. So, you know, I'm far off being able to, to actually just start building this thing. I kind of need to also plan out like how to do it in videos. It's something I don't really talk about, but you know, how many videos am I going to spend building it? What should I do in the first video and stuff? There's actually quite a lot of planning that goes into to that side of things as well. But it's just it's just hard to, to show that in a behind the scenes video compared to me designing it. But anyway, as always at the end of one of these videos, I am rambling now, but that is the end here. There will hopefully be more behind the scenes videos coming up in the future. So keep an eye out for them. But for now, thanks for watching and I will see you all later. Bye.